Welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to explore the application of the datum graph feature. Not the graph as a result of some analysis, but the datum graph feature that drives and controls your geometry. In an earlier tip, we touched on the graph feature to control helical shapes. As a review, let's take a look at that now. First of all, the graph feature must exist before the feature that you'd like to have it modify. We'll drag it up before the variable section sweep, and then we'll add a relation that is not at the part level, but at, at the section of this variable section sweep, allowing us to edit the relation in the section directly. Now, we don't want regular trage parp. We want to use the expression called eval graph. Open paren, quote, the name of the graph, in this case ANG, close quote and then comma and then specify specifically where on that graph it is to be evaluated. In this case, simply tragpar. So the result is evaluate the graph called angle along the entire length of 0 to 1. If I look now at the result, regenerate, you'll see how it compressed the ends of the spring. And again, in the tip on helix, we talk a lot about this. Let's look at another application of the graph feature. In this example, we won't be looking at a variable section sweep, but in regular modeling. In this case, we have a simple model of a, just a cube, two and a half long, with a hole in it that is currently one inch in diameter. What if, for example, we would like to vary the size of the hole as a function of the length of the protrusion? How would you do that? Again, it would be with a graph. We'll move the graph that I've constructed here ahead of the hole so that we can use it for the hole. And what I'll do is I'll edit its definition, changing its section, leaving its name. Here's the, the section of the graph. In this case, it's just a stair step, starting at one inch high, that will represent the diameter, for a total of three inches. After it gets to three inches, though, the hole will jump to two inches up till four and then it'll go to the two and a half. So you see you can develop any kind of section here as well as two points at the same x value. Very curious. Now watch how this works. We've got the graph, we've got the hole. So what we're going to do is ask for a relation that is for the feature. Last time was section, this time for feature. The feature that we'll use will be the hole. We're going to specify the diameter is equal to eval graph, the name of the graph, which is h diameter, close quote, comma, and then where on the graph. In this case, the where is this parameter here. So now, close paren. Well, how does this work? If I modify this value from 2 to, say, 3, you'll see the hole stays at the 1. But if I vary this just a touch over 3, the hole jumps to 2. I can go to 3.5, stays at 2. I can go to 4, stays at 2. But if I go just anywhere over 4, you'll see then it jumps to the 2.5. There, a graph feature controlling another feature in a regular model. Let's take a look at a third example now. In this example, we'll be taking a look at the effects of graph features with respect to curves from equation. So here we have another helical shape where we've got a curve that is defined by an equation. In this case, using a cylindrical coordinate system, where the radius is fixed and the length is determined by the z parameter, yielding a very nice uh, controlled helical shape. But what if I wanted to, again, flatten the ends or change the pitch or, in this case, control the z? So let's pull the z up, z graph, ahead of the curve here and I'll edit its definition keeping the section, keeping the name. And now the section looks a lot like the one we used for the helical sweep, where in this case the z value is going to change 
Not at all at first. We're going to stay with a straight line, and then we have an arc to a uniformly or linearly increasing z value, and then taper off again to a perfectly flat section. So how does that work? We'll go back to the curve, edit its definition, changing the equation, and so the z value isn't just going to be t times 8 in this case. The z value is going to be a val graph of the z graph and then where on the graph? Well the graph went from 0 to 10 so we're going to use t times 10. So if I allow this graph to be incorporated you'll see how the ends get nice and flattened. What are some other interesting things that can be done with graphs? Let's take a look now at creating a drawing. Let's give it a name. Let's make an empty one on a B size this time. Okay, here's my sheet and I want to make some views and so right click insert view. Let's put one say here. Let's put another here. Maybe a left view this time. I'm going to change the scale to a half. So I got there's a couple of views, but let's take a look at what else you can do. You can add a graph. This is version 5 of Wildfire. Version 4 allows you to also insert a graph view. Give me a list since I've got two. I'm going to put the Z one here, and I'm going to put the other one that I have called Rad here. Now, if I pick these two views and I go to my annotation tab, I can show, let's just show all dimensions in this case. Putting graphs on drawings can be very quick, easy, and allow you to modify the values very, very simply. Let's go back to the part. Let's incorporate this next graph that I called rad. How will that manifest itself in our curve from equation? Edit the definition. Let's look at this equation. Good. Incorporate that. Now, our helix looks like so. What about the drawing? Very interesting. Well, you notice here, this one occurs, this radius change happens in 3. We'll do the same then for this one. Change this to 3, regenerate, and there it is updated. Notice how the coils lay perfectly flat which I couldn't do with a variable section sweep. Let's take this one more step. Let's go back to the part and let's add through tools and parameters. We're going to add a parameter now called turns. In this case I've already added it, but it's just a new parameter called turns. It's a real number and we got it at 9.5 right now. By creating a parameter at the part level I can then add a note to my drawing and let's call that note maybe turns equals and then shift 7 or ampersand and the user defined parameter at the part level which in this case is turns and there is my note with my turns so I've got a parameter called turns and I've got it on my drawing and so the only thing missing now is to incorporate it in my model. If I go back to the curve from equation, edit its definition, changing the equation, the number of turns is here. All I need to do, add turns. Incorporate that into the curve and now it's nine turns or nine and a half. If I go back here, change this maybe to 12 and update the model you'll see how it updates very nicely. Let's pick these two views and change their properties. So, graphs to control curves from equations, graphs to control regular features, graphs to control variable section sweeps. Well, I hope a little of this made sense to you, and I hope you've enjoyed this month's installment of Video Tip of the Month. So long now.